Welcome back. So we have been looking at how to model problems using linear programming and graph theory. So the basic idea is that if you have to solve the problem or if you have to attack a problem, one of the easy ways is to convert it in a mathematical language that is well studied. In that way, you can use the known mathematical tools or use the national mathematical tools to solve the problem. There are various mathematical languages which can be used to model a problem. For discrete problems, two of the more powerful techniques are graph theory and linear programming. So in this, uh, in the last couple of videos, we have looked at some problems and how to solve them using linear programming. Now in this video, we will be, we are back to graph theory and we will see how one can use it to solve the problems using graph theory. So to quickly, uh, to quickly revise what a graph is, a graph is something like this, right? We have a set of vertices and a set of edges, which are basically arrows or lines between the set of vertices. The vertices represent certain objects or states or something like that. The edges represent, li represent the relationships between the vertices, so binary relations in particular. And using this model of, um, using this kind of a structure, we can represent various problems. So for example, this is a set of vertices and this is a set of edges that we have, right? Of course, very advantage of our graph is that it is simple and it is very general. It is used for representing, expressing binary relations among objects. We have seen some of the examples already. A typical example is a friendship graph where every person is a vertex and if two persons are friends then there is an edge between the respective vertices and we get a friendship graph using this technique. Or we can have directed graph when the relationship is not reflexive. In that case, we can add edges in one direction, I mean the edges can have direction and we call directed graph. Right, so the edges can have directions and we have what we call as directed graphs. Now, a typical example of a directed graph is the internet graph, where every website is a vertex, and if there is a link from a website to another website, it is a directed graph. And we get the internet graph, which is used a lot by various search engines. So this is, for example, a particular kind of directed graph. This is a short of a direct of, a, of the internet graph. We can also have weights on the edges and in that case we can have weighted directed graph. For example, we can have weights like this and we get a weighted directed graph. For example, in the case of road networks, we can have vertices that are cities, edges that are roads, and the weights can represent the distance between two vertices, right? For example, here, distance between Amsterdam to Berlin is 690 miles, and so on. Similarly, the air connectivity, we can have, if there is a vertices are airports, and whether there is an edge between, uh, there is an edge between one vertex to the another, if there is a flight between those two vertices. Typical example, you can see it in almost any uh, any airplane. This map is usually there. It is a directed map of the air connectivity, right? There are many other problems that can be converted into graph theory, and hence studying structure of graphs and designing algorithms for graphs is a very important field. 
And the formal definition, we have seen this thing many times. So we can have vertices, which is a set of elements, edges, which are pairs of objects, pairs of vertices. The graph is given as the vertex and the edge. And there can be, the edges can be weighted, namely there can be weights on every edge. So there is a weight function from the edge set to the real numbers. Now using all these things, let's try to first solve the problem of the telephone tower problem that we were dealing with last, uh, we, have, we spoke about last video. So here basically you have n important locations and we want to ensure that all these, all the n important locations have 3G network. So for that, to ensure that a location has 3G network, we have to first upgrade some of the towers, to upgrade the infrastructure of some of the towers, and every of these n locations must be in a distance less than one kilometer from at least one tower. Right? And it's still an optimization problem because we want to minimize the number of towers we want to optimize. Now let's try to model it as graphs. So let's import the locations and the V1 to Vn and the towers be in the location T1 to Tk. Right? And if two of the locations are in distance 1 kilometer, then we will draw an edge between them. So the vertex set is v1 to vn and t1 to tk and if there is a location, if two locations are close to less than 1 kilometer distance, we draw an edge between them. By doing so, we get a graph of this form, something like this, where the red vertices are the tower locations and the grey vertices are the non-tower locations. Now what is it that we want? Okay, so what does this graph say? This says that this vertex A is distance less than 1 kilometer from D. It is, but this is for example the vertex J is distance 1 kilometer from both C and E. So if A has to get the 3G connection, then D must be upgraded. Whereas if J has to get the 3G connection, either C or E has to be upgraded, and so on. Now clearly this is particularly, this is a toy example, in the sense that the graph is not an original graph, so it doesn't exactly show all the compli complexities of this problem. But the main idea is, we have to pick a set of red edges, red vertices, such that for all vertex in the graph, at least one neighbor is picked, one of the red neighbors is picked, and we want to minimize the number of vertices picked. Now this is a typical problem, we call it as a vertex over problem. But this is just a formulation of the problem. How do you come and solve the minimum vertex over problem is a different matter altogether. So here I have used the graph to write it down as a vertex over problem. Now, how do you solve them? So first of all, one thing to do is that we can now use LP formulations on top of this. So for example, define for every vertex which is red, let me define the variables xc, xd, xg, xc, representing whether I choose that vertex or not. It is 1 if I choose the vertex, 0 otherwise. Now if I do it like that, how do I ensure that all the vertex have at least one neighbor picked? So that means take a vertex, say b. And if it has neighbor C, D and E, then we have to ensure that XC, XD plus XC plus XC is greater than 1. This ensures that since the XC, XD and XC is 0 or 1, this can be greater than 1 only if one of them is 1 
which means one of its neighbors is ticked. So if we if we basically put the condition that for all for all vertex B this holds, then we have the condition, the whole condition. And we are trying to minimize something, right? The minimization is of course we have to minimize the sum over all the number of things that we are picking up. Note that here we picked up the problem, converted into a graph problem and kind of helped us to visualize what's going on and that's what helped us to write the LP formulation of this. Now this is of course a vertex cover problem and it is a very well studied problem and hence there are there is a big literature on this particular problem also. But in any case, now that we have done it, we have a set of variables, we want to minimize something such that this thing holds and the variables are 0 and 1. And this is exactly the LP formulation of this problem. Again, as you might recall, this is not exactly LP formulation because it has the variable is not from R but it is from 0 and 1. And hence, we don't know how to solve this particular problem exactly. Right? So, we have to solve this variable. Unfortunately, it is an integer linear programming and we might have to apply things like randomization or the rounding technique that we talked about last class to solve it. Of course, we can, uh, we can re relax this LP to get, relax this condition to get the x size to be real number between 0 and 1. In that case, we get a real P, we can solve it, and then we can use the usual technique that we did last time to solve it. <coughs> now, the main point here is not how to solve it, but the fact that we can take the problem, use graph theory to model it or visualize it and then use a linear programming to model that problem into a defined setup. Now let's moving on to an another problem. Here is the scheduling problem that we had. Here we had this six meetings that we have and the HR has to ensure what is the least number of rooms to book such that we it can arrange for the meetings to be held in different rooms so that there is no confusion or other two meetings which are clashing in time doesn't happen in the same room how many now what is the minimum number of rooms to be done now again we can use graph theory to solve this or to model this problem So here we represent every meeting as a vertex and we draw an A between two vertices if there is a clash in time and we want to slot them in different rooms so that if there is an A between two vertex they happen in two different rooms. So in other words we want to color the vertices using as little as less number of colors as possible and this is what of course we have done this problem it is the famous chromatic number of rows right so in other words we want to kind of assign the vertices to rooms in other words colors such that no two adjacent color vertex has the same color the question is that what is the minimum number of colors required to color the graph So if this is the vertex, then if, of course, if we color, if we assign this one to the room red room, then B must be assigned to some other room, which is the blue room, and then C can be uh, assigned to the red room again. Then D has to be assigned to a new room, cannot be assigned to red and blue because A and B are of red and blue. And similarly, you go on and we color assign various vertices to the various rooms. The question is that what is the minimum number of colors required to color this graph? 
the application of course as I had pointed out it's available in various coloring of map, the map and so on now the main idea that I wanted to convey in this few video lectures is that many problems can be modeled as graph, graph problems some can be modeled using linear programming or optimization problem there is lot of technique in the literature to solve this problem one important thing to note is how to model these problems in a mathematical way in different mathematical language once you know how to solve to write it in a different language then you can use tools from other techniques to solve it we have seen graph theory and linear programming both of them are a subject by itself a whole code subject so i cannot go too much into details of graph theory and linear programming but here we the, the main point is that learning how to convert a problem into a graph theory problem or a linear programming problem or in some other language is a very important and essential tool to have in the next video we will look at other aspects of discrete math which we will be moving away from Graph theory. Thank you.